Hello, my friends. My name is Ian Vare, and I am the Green Mountain Chef, coming to you from the studios of Peg TV here in Rutland, Vermont. First, I would like to thank the local farmers markets here in Vermont, downtown Rutland and the Dorset farmers markets. What I'm doing on this show is a bit of a collaboration with Vermont farmers markets. I'm using healthy, local, local sourced foods from uh, grown from our neighbors, from our friends, some of our families, very sustainably grown foods. I am a member of the farmers markets here in uh, Vermont and I've been a member for many years. These folks are excellent friends, part of our community. Every few weeks they donate food for me to bring into the studio and it's an excellent way for me to demonstrate healthy tactics, French tactics, to give you the amount of calories in a, in a meal, the nutrient content, the cost, a lot of things that our local viewers are not quite sure of. We go out to eat a lot, we go to the grocery stores, not as much cooking at home as potentially there could be. There's a lot of issues going on right now with, uh, with COVID and some people are afraid to venture out of their house. Farmers markets are a lovely venue to be outdoors, to get healthy vegetables, healthy meats, cheeses, all kinds of wonderful food. So I really would like to thank all of the members of the farmers markets for donating their, their energy and, and time and product to help me bring this to the airways here at Peg TV and other stations in Vermont. So today I have a lovely menu for you. I'll be cooking a seared Vermont maple pork chop topped with local wild chanterelle mushrooms. I'm also putting together some balsamic roasted root vegetables. They happen to be beets and carrots today, but many other types of root vegetables could be substituted. The third recipe will be a pearled barley that I'm cooking in a vegetable stock, rather a chicken stock, but either one could be used. And then I'll be tossing it at the end once it's cooked with fresh sage and feta cheese. Fun food. Mostly I'm, I like to focus on the method and healthy ingredients. And these recipes are nice because different ingredients can be used and sort of substituted. It could be mushrooms that you're using. It could be fresh herbs. It could be dried herbs. It could be dried spices. It could be brown rice. It could be beef. There's a lot of different options. So first, I'd like to start with the seared pork chop. So some friends of mine at the market own a lovely farm. They donated these pork chops to me for today. And first I'd like to talk about cooking pork chops. There is a parasitic worm that can occur in pork. It's called trichinella and it causes trichinosis which can be very upsetting for the stomach and cause diarrhea, believe it or not, not fun. Uh, so when we're cooking pork, we always want to cook to at least 145 degrees. The trichinella parasite actually dies at 137, but FDA has given the parameters of at least 145. Now, some of you may say, you know, how, how cooked is that? Well, believe it or not, it's only about medium. So if we're cooking mid well or well, we're far above the parameters of uh, eliminating the trichinosis. Okay, so I'm keeping it simple today. We have a nice approximately six ounce pork chop and I'm not using any extravagant spices. Today it's going to be simply salt and pepper. And at the end, I'm going to be finishing the pork chop with Vermont maple syrup. Yum. Okay, we have a nice hot pan. So with a sear or saute, that's really the definition. 
of uh, that cooking method. Hot pan, just a little bit of fat. There's probably a teaspoon of avocado oil. You could use canola oil, you could use grapeseed oil, you can use any type of oil you like, but I highly recommend a, a high smoke point oil for searing or saute. So that's going to go right into the pan, and you want it to, you, you want to hear a, a sizzle, if you will, when that goes in. Now, if we touch the product, we always want to wash our hands. I'm using tongs, and I'll only be using them for this. Now, if your heat's up too high and you start to get a little too much smoke, no big deal. Just turn your flame down a bit, okay? So this is going to cook for a few minutes, and I'm cooking this start to finish on the show, okay? It's not going to take too long. It's not going to cook all the way through in this pan. What I'm actually going to do is, is sear this and then finish it in the oven while I'm cooking other um, recipes. <laughs> okay, so I am a mushroom forager on top of being a chef, and I get into the woods at least one day a week. Yesterday, I happened to be in the woods, close by, only a few miles from here, in fact, and I bumped into a lovely yellow chanterelle mushroom. And I'm going to be cooking this on top at the end, finishing the, uh, the pork chop with it, okay? The chanterelle mushroom grows all around the world, and it's delicious. Believe it or not, it was the first edible wild mushroom that this chef ever consumed. I was a bit fr afraid the first time, to be honest. There are look-alikes that are a bit ominous. They're, they can be dangerous. There's one specifically that grows in this area that's called a jack-o'-lantern. Sounds a little scary, okay? Now, I believe we're gonna be putting a photo up on the, the screen here. It's gonna show the difference between the two. Now. Chanterelle, they're bright yellow. They're descending. They will be growing out under oak and pine, usually, in leaf litter and pine needle litter. There'll be one or two coming up at a time. This is a nice example of, of, of two of them coming up. But the difference with the jack-o'-lantern is they're not so yellow. They're more orange, like a pumpkin, like a jack-o'-lantern. And they grow divergently. They, they grow from one common source, and there's many petals coming out. They like to grow on stumps, not out in the middle of the woods, okay? Big difference. They like to grow on dead wood. For me, I'm so comfortable with them, there's, there's no potential mistaken a chanterelle for a jack-o'-lantern. Okay, so this is important information. Some of you might be saying, well, he's using a chanterelle, you know, there's this other thing that could get me sick. Um, but truly, once you get used to identifying and using a book like a National Audubon Society or working with a mentor, say like myself, uh, who can make you more established comfort for you, uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, all that said, you don't have to use a chanterelle. You don't have to finish uh, this recipe with this mushroom, but it's a lot of fun, you know? I mean, why not? They're right in our backyard. Okay, I'm gonna turn this pork chop. Looks nice. Sorry for the smoke, guys. Not too bad. But we want it to be nicely seared. I'm adjusting my flame a little bit here. Okay. So, back to the chanterelle. I'm going to be cooking this in just a moment. So, I've already cleaned them, usually just with a, a, a paintbrush. Uh, is enough. There might be a, a little bit of dirt down at the bottom, maybe. Usually just a brush, you, you can brush everything right off. And I have several of them here. They're quite nice. They're, their aroma is that of almost like a, an earthy peach. It's very interesting. Okay, so I have several. I was out yesterday and I decided to bring them in today. Why not? What a great opportunity. So I'm just going to cut them Honestly, they're not that big. I'm just cutting them right in half. This one I'm going to quarter. It's a little larger. All right, now when you're using your knife, always remember to tuck your fingers and keep your thumb back. That way you don't have to worry about nicking yourself or cutting yourself at all. Okay, so we have these guys. Got another pan that I'm going to cook them in. The pork chop looks quite nice. This is going to go in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes tops. We don't want to cook it till it's shoe leather. 
we want it to be. I, I prefer medium well. So that's about 155 degrees. Now I brought my uh, thermometer with me that I use frequently uh, with meat. Uh, very important, folks. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So, in the oven. And I decided to cook the mushrooms with a bit of butter. You can use oil. They're going to be nice, though. And this is some Irish butter. Half of a tablespoon at the most is how much I used. Again, sauteing, high heat, low fat. Mushrooms are going to go in. And I'm keeping this very simple for us. All right, I want us to taste these mushrooms. They're lovely. They're nothing like a button mushroom or a portobello that you'll find in the store. Nothing. So I've been eating, I've been studying the mushrooms out of National Audubon Society for 18 years now. And I've, I've been enjoying them about 13 years. Um, I met someone many years ago who uh, guided me. And kind of like myself today, uh, he had a strong comfort level and um, knowledge of what he was doing in the forest with mushrooms. So that was quite a treat. Today, I actually have a mushroom business. And uh, I get to be a chef where I like to be a chef. And I get to bring my mushrooms to different venues and cook with them and teach people about them. And it's wonderful. All right. So with wild mushrooms, we don't want to eat them raw. In fact, all mushrooms, even the ones you get in the store, have some level of toxicity. But, but we didn't know that. So we always cook our mushrooms. That's about it. A few minutes. I'm going to leave it in the pan here. Pork chops in the oven. And we're going to move on to my next dish. All right. So my balsamic roasted root vegetables. That's what we have next. And this week, I decided to bring some local carrots. And they're interesting. They don't, they're all kind of nubby and funky looking. I mean, they, they, these are, check these out. These are organic carrots that a good friend of mine grows at a local farm. I mean, what the heck? They're, they're not all perfect and big and fat and small and you know, exactly the same size. These are all different. All I'm going to do with these folks, I'm not even going to peel them, OK? There's, there's vitamins and nutrients in, in this entire vegetable. So why, why peel it and take away from, from the goodness? I'm just cutting the top off, just barely. This is going to go right into a porcelain pan casserole dish, I suppose you could say. Next, I have some beets. And I want to talk about the beets. The greens are very interesting. They're beautiful. These can be used in a salad. This could be used in a salad before, um, you know, as an appetizer-ish before this meal. So I'm going to take them home and eat them tonight. Not enough time to make a salad on, you know, four dishes is, is a lot in 30 minutes. But I'm going to reserve these and Maybe with a little feta cheese, like I'm going to use in one of the dishes today. Maybe with a little balsamic vinegar and some, some tomatoes. Uh, quite a nice, just little accent to the dish. So I'm going to hang on to these. So these beets, they've been washed. Okay, some people might like to peel beets. Um, some people might not. Now there's more nutrients and fiber in the skin. The easiest way to take the skin off is to roast them first. Okay, and if I was to do that, I would leave them whole and I'd wrap them tight in foil and I'd roast them and then I'd let them cool down and I'd peel the skin off. For this recipe, honest, honestly, I'm going to keep it just the way it is. I'm going to keep it simple today. Okay? Simple, healthy, delicious. All right, take the top off. Just a bit of the bottom. By the way, I have approximately a half a pound each of the carrots and the beets, OK? No perfect method here, folks, OK? I'm really just quartering these. If I had larger beets, I might cut them into six pieces rather than four, maybe eight pieces. These are going to be going into the oven 
for approximately an hour at 400 degrees. I have some in the oven right now. I don't have an hour to, to cook them with you here on the show. So I'm just arranging these in my dish, my casserole dish, and I have my balsamic vinegar, a few tablespoons at the most. It's going to give it some nice flavor, slightly acidic, slightly sweet. It's also going to help steam these. The vinegar will, honestly, most of it's going to evaporate off. A little salt and pepper. Now, these recipes, again, are guides. Add more to this if you like. Throw some garlic in there. Throw some herbs in there. One of the members of the staff here has an aversion to garlic, and I decided this week to not use any garlic, just for fun. How easy was that? I cut them up. I put them in a casserole dish. A little balsamic vinegar and some salt and pepper. Putting a lid on my casserole dish. If you don't have a lid, cover this with foil. All right, so uh, it, it, the, the heat stays inside uh, much more efficiently and, and uh, there's gonna be some steam going on from uh, the vinegar. Right into the oven, an hour. Okay, next. I'm going to be cooking some barley. Now, I love barley. Now, a lot of people tend to eat more, say, brown rice, and uh, they're similar. Uh, the, the barley has a little more fiber, and it's a little more chewy, a little bit different texture, consistency. Uh, there's a few types of barley. You can get whole barley, and you can get pearl barley. The pearl barley has had the whole and the bran removed. And uh, it's not brown like the whole barley. It's, it's a little more uh, off-white, I would say. So I have some here today. And the ratio is what I want to teach here today. Three to one. Three parts liquid to one part barley. Okay? Brown rice tends to be about two and a half to one. So this is slightly more. It retains a little more liquid. Now, you could use water. I elected to use a stock. And a stock is a flavorful liquid that you, uh, you're able to achieve using usually bones, celery, carrots, um, garlic, onions, things like that. And it's simmered for a few hours. Okay? Today I used some, some chicken bones that were left over in the freezer from a previous show that I did uh, not long ago. Okay? So, three parts stock. You could add some salt and pepper into this, all right? Now, I'm going to be adding some feta cheese into it, which has a fairly high salt content, so I'm not even going to add any salt to it. I'm going to give it a little pepper. I'm going to let it come to a simmer. We're going to add in the barley. We're going to turn it down on low and about 25 minutes. Now that's not a set a timer, walk away, come back in 25 minutes sort of deal. All right? When cooking barley, sometimes it, sometimes it accepts that liquid a little bit faster. All right? We need to babysit it a little bit. Okay? I usually set it about 10 minutes before give it a stir, kind of check on it, and uh, frequently 20 to 25 minutes and it's done. All right? Some people like it cooked more not quite as chewy, a little softer. So if that's the case, we're going to go longer, maybe 25 to 30 minutes. All right, it's not an exact science. Remember, these are methods. And I like to cook and use and teach with methods so that my recipes can be altered, changed. You know, viewers at home can take something that they've learned and apply it to many different dishes and using many different ingredients and make their own um, types of recipes and, and meals based on something that I've taught that is, uh, you know, one course, one path, and, you know, maybe you just take a few other little, little branches off of there and try something different. It's a lot of fun. That's part of why I like cooking so much. You know, in culinary school, they, they taught us specific tact and methods, and then it was kind of like, go out, have fun. 
And that's what we did um, in restaurants for a long time. All right, we're just about to a simmer. I'm going to add my barley. Get that covered. Now, meanwhile, so we don't have enough time on the show to cook this start to finish. So I, I've already cooked some, just finished just about when we started. And I'm going to switch these up, OK? Let that cook over on this side. And I'm going to bring over the same ratio, the same quantity, OK? Three to one. Now, I'm going to add the feta cheese. This is locally farmer's market sourced. It's delicious. It's lovely. You can get this at the store. You don't have to go to the farmer's market. But I'm real big on promoting local. That's why I'm here today. This is about four cups worth of barley. And I'm adding four ounces of feta cheese. All right? And I'm just going to sort of small dice this. I didn't add any salt into this. The feta's a little salty. Ooh, I got some fun color from the beets in there, too. Fun. What the heck? I'm a fun guy. <laughs> All right. So I put the cheese in first because I want it to melt a little bit. It doesn't have to be all fully incorporated. It doesn't matter. But it is going to melt a bit. So I recommend having this, you know, e it's easy to have this prepared and, and ready 10 or 15 minutes before the meal. Get it out of the way. Now I have some lovely sage that I also, you know, acquired at the local market. It was donated to me. Excellent. So I love sage. It's beautiful. And I'm just going to pick off a few leaves here. These are great. These plants, you know, the way they're presented, you can use it for cooking that night. You can plant this in your garden. This is from a friend's backyard, all right? Like a small little farm, local. But, you know, these, you know, what the heck, let's use a little more. These folks are great friends. And uh, this is sustainable ingredients, these are. so. Highly recommend. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a rough chop. You can use more. You can use less. I recommend erring on the side of using a little less in the beginning, just to see what you think about it. Yum. OK, so we have our barley. Let's start thinking about plating up. Television magic is a lot of fun because I can create something that takes a long, lot longer than it would uh, right here on television. Um, you know, to be honest, what I would cook first would be those root vegetables. It would take about an hour. What I would do second would be to make this barley. What I would do third would be to make pork chop. That takes the least amount of time. But it's a little bit different on air. Okay, So for some of you that are maybe love this meal and want to reproduce this at home, that's my suggestion uh, from the chef to the viewer. All right. So this meal cost under $10 per person. All right. Some of you say, I don't go to the farmer's market. It's too expensive. That's less than any, any restaurant you're ever going to go to anywhere to find a meal like this. And you can cook it at home, and you know exactly where you're getting it and what's in it. All right? There's some, something to be said about that. Now, calorie-wise, a little bit more than the last couple shows. Slightly under 900 calories. That's not bad for one meal, especially at dinner. Not, not too bad. Nutrient-wise, they're pretty, pretty evenly distributed. Fats, there's about 45 grams. Carbohydrates, a little less than 60. 
and protein a little more than 60. All right, pretty good stuff. So I'm using approximately a cup of barley. Now when I was researching this online and looking at nutrient content, they said a half a cup was a serving. This is good. I mean, I'm gonna eat a lot more than a half a cup. So I'm gonna, I cost it out to a cup. And nutrient wise, I, same kind of deal. I laid it out to be using a cup. All right. There's that. Let's grab these root vegetables. They're nice. These went for about an hour, okay? And I'm just gonna lay them out any which way, folks. Now, if you do, say, burn these and cook them too much, they are gonna be a little bit bitter, all right? Just so we know. Very low calories in our root vegetables, everyone. All right, this pork chop. So we only season this with some salt and pepper. All right, let's make it a little nicer. Let's see here. Let's see. It has a nice little sort of bowl in there. It's kind of concave for me. Now I have the chanterelle mushrooms. Oops, before I do that, I've got some nice Vermont maple syrup, also locally sourced from friends of mine. Very cool, farmer's market. Okay, the chanterelles are gonna go on top. Look at these, they're beautiful. Less than a teaspoon of maple is what I used. Now, you could add some broccoli into this. You could give it some more green. I, the chef in me likes to use some garnish. So for the green, I'm just gonna throw in a little parsley. All right, can we see that okay, everyone? All right, let's add another, another carrot in there, give it a little more color. I like that. Pork chop's kind of, kind of hidden, but it has all kinds of nice flavor in there with it. So, this meal, it's locally sourced. Friends of mine, people that I nearly consider family, to be honest with you. Some of our neighbors, our local community, are growing this food. Local farmers. It's not coming from somewhere that we have no idea. It's organic, okay? The ingredients that I use are nearly in our backyard. The methods that I'm using are tried and true, French methods, healthy. So I really hope that everyone understood that all the process that I went through today, that they can appreciate where all this food is from and they continue to watch my shows as they unfold. Everyone, my friends, my name is Ian Vare, and I'm the Green Mountain Chef. Thank you.